Hello, hello, good evening. Okay, we are starting in this uh, session number three of this week number three also. So we are going to continue with the topics that we have for these uh, days. Remember that we are going to have a, the next session this Friday because we are going to have five days in this week. So we are going to see each other tomorrow also and we are going to end the week number three tomorrow and then we are just going to have four more days and we are going to end the uh, module but uh, first i need to tell you something uh, and then we are going to start with uh, the with the topic um ya está en la etapa de la reinscripción nos pidieron que les recordáramos esto uh, porque ustedes saben que llevan este proceso de reinscripciones para seguir con sus siguientes módulos. Así que ya están y este, la fecha límite sería el 4 de octubre. Así que pueden empezar a hacer todos sus procesos para no quedarse sin sus inscripciones. So, remember that you need to do all the, the things because uh, it's part of the process also. It is just not to work on the platform but you need to, to uh, have uh, these uh, things done. And you have a, a limit of time in which you are going to uh, do these things. So if you can do it in these days, better. But remember that you are in this uh, time because we are going to end uh, the uh, course uh, the next week. So in that case, Because in that case, you are going to lose the, the, like, the space that you have on the courses. Así que recuerden que ya está en etapa de, de, de reinscripción en este caso, para que no se vayan a quedar fuera de sus módulos. Así que recuerden hacer su proceso en estos días, porque el, el, la fecha límite es el 4 de octubre. So, saying that information, and I'm going to... Uh, repeat that information uh, when the others uh, come to the meeting. So we are going to start with the topic that we have for today. And remember that yesterday we were talking about um, the use of wish, or in this case, expressing wishes. We were talking about the structures and how to create um, real situations into unreal situations. And also we were like uh, remembering the uh, structures that we have for the different uh, tenses that we have in English. And in this case, we are going to talk about those tenses again, but we are going to have a lot of information that we are going to use. Uh, and also we are going to learn what are the uses for the different tenses that we have. And in this case, we are going to begin with the present tense. We are going to have two tenses per day. And today we are going to have the present simple and we are going to have present perfect. So we are going to have information about mm, those um, tenses that we have in present. We are going to have like the structures. We are going to have examples. We are going to have um, the uses that we can give to these tenses. And tomorrow we are going to have the other two tenses in present because we are going to divide the present time into sessions. So we are going to start with the topic and we are going to share all the elements that we are going to need for these tense. So the thing is that we are going to talk about present time. So. Give me a second and I'm going to share the screen with you and I'm going to begin writing the information that we need for this um, session.
Okay, this one is not like a very complicated topic. In this case, we have a lot of information about the present time or the present simple in this case, because this one is a, the first tense that we are going to, to learn or to, um, we can say to discuss today. And this is one of the first uh, topic that we can develop when we are learning English. So in this case, we are going to have like the most important points or the structures. Uh, we are going to see how to create sentences, but you know that they have like very simple elements that we need to use to create sentences in a present simple. So we are going to begin with that part. And I'm going to start with the uh, structure that we can use for the present simple. So here for the structure, we have the subject that is all uh, obviously our main uh, actor in this case, because we need to, to have someone that realize the action or in this case, do the action. So we have the subject. Then we have the uh, simple verb in this case, or we can say the base form of the verb in present time. And we have the, we can say the complement in this case. So we can see that in this case, the present uh, sentences are very, very simple and they don't have like a lot of elements, but in this case, they are very simple sentences. When we um, have like more experience with this topic or with uh, the language, we can create um, long sentences and also we can connect those sentences into a conversation. So in that case, we are going to learn separate simple sentences. And also we know that we can use connectors and all of the things to create those uh, conversation, long conversation. And also we can use um, some words that make our a speech more fluently. So in that case, uh, we are just going to see the most basic things about the simple present. And we are going to remember all the elements that we can have in this uh, tense. And then we are going to um, like change the tense and we are going to begin with the present perfect. So in that case, we are going to have some um, information, some examples we are going to uh, have in which cases we are going to use uh, these tense. And also we are going to say, or to see something like verb conjugation and spelling. And also we are going to see the negative form of the, of the sentences, questions, and the use of do and does also because this is a part of this tense. So we're going to begin with the information and with the examples. So this is the basic thing or the base of this structure. And we can say that we are going to use this present simple to describe an action that is regular, true, or normal. So in this case is for things that don't have like a lot of things and they are very, very normal 
or in some cases there are true in this case it's not like talking about fantasy or something that is not true in this case it's something that is happening for real so then we use the the present tense and we are going to have four a uh, moment in which we are going to use this present tense. So the first one of the uses that we can uh, have for this uh, tense is for repeated or regular actions in the present time. So in this case, maybe uh, it's talking about uh, things that we do like very regular, in this case, almost always. Uh, for example, I go to work and I take a bus or I wake up at 5 a.m or I eat breakfast at 7 a.m. every day. So in that case is uh, talking about uh, that actions that we uh, perform almost all the time and they are like very common for us to complete that action at the same time in the same way. So for that uh, kind of actions, we are going to use this present uh, simple or present time so we are going to see some example for this use number one. We have an in, in, in the example number one, I take the train to the office. I take the train to the office. And we have here the verb that is in present, I take. Then we have the number two, in this case, the train to Travis leaves every hour. Chabi, Chabris. Leaves every hour so here we have another verb that is leaves then we have another one and it says sada sleeps every eight hours every night during the week sara sleeps i mean Sleeps eight hours every night during the week. Okay, in this case, we have the verb sleeps or sleep. And we have the verbs in present. So the use number one is for every period action or a regular action that we perform every day. Then we have the number two. In this case, it is related to, or we can use it for facts. So in this case, we are talking about something that is true in this case we cannot say ah maybe it could be or in this case it is a possibility in this case is something that is true and we have some examples and we have here 
The president of the USA lives in the White House. Number two, a dog has four legs. So in this case, when we have this kind of sentences, we know that in some cases we are not going to have like a dog with four legs because maybe it's something um, from the way that uh, animal born or a, it suffered an accident, but the thing is that we can say that many of the dogs, almost all the dogs has four legs. So in that case is something that is a fact, but we can change that situation when we are talking about the exceptions for this sentence. And we have another one. We come from El Salvador. So here we have the verbs. We have this one, this one, and this one. So in this case, we have two uses for the uh, simple present or present simple. Then we have the number three in this case is for habits. In this case, it is not like the, the first one because in the first one, maybe we uh, do that action because we don't have like another um, option, for example, or is something that is like a schedule. But in this case, in the habits, it's something that we decide to do. And through time, we feel like very comfortable with that situation. And we don't like to change the things. So for that reason, we have these habits and we think that um, it's going to work because it, it is. So in that case, this is something that we decide to do. And in the first one for a period of regular actions is for things that uh, function that way. So in the number three, we say that uh, we are talking about habits. And we have like the examples. So we have like this, I get up early every day. So in this case, when we say I wake up early every day, in this case is because I decide to do it like that. And if we have that uh, same sentence on the first one, we can say, I wake up at 5 a.m. to go to work. And in that case is because I need to do it like that. But in this case, I decide to wake up every day at the same time. In this case is yearly. So it's kind of different. Then Laura brushes her teeth twice a day. So in this case, that girl decide to brush her teeth twice a day. Maybe you do it three times, four times, all the times that you want. But in this case, that girl decide to do it like that. Then we have another one in this say, they travel to their country house every weekend.
in that case, we have three parts and we are going to have one more. In this case, we have the number four. And for things that are always or generally true. We have here, it rains a lot in winter. Number two, the Queen of England lives in Buckingham Palace. And then number three, they speak English at work. Okay, we have four parts in this case and we have the uses for this uh, present tense. In this case, we have number one, for a period of regular action in the present time, for facts, uh, for habits, or for things that are always or generally true. Así que tenemos cuatro partes o cuatro usos importantes que nosotros le damos al eh, tiempo presente, en este caso al presente simple, y es para acciones regulares o que se repiten mucho en el tiempo presente. Tenemos también para, eh, lo podemos decir en este caso como para datos eh, relevantes, pero que también son ciertos para hábitos y para eh, cosas que siempre o generalmente resultan ser ciertas. So we have some examples in this case in which we are like eh, using the structure that we have at the beginning of the document that is a subject plus a simple verb plus the complement. So, um, al inicio no estaban la mayoría, eh, les estaba diciendo de que se nos dijo que les avisáramos que ya están en la etapa de reinscripción para los cursos, así que tienen que eh, reinscribirse en estos días porque la reinscripción eh, termina el 4 de octubre, así que si no lo han hecho, tienen estos días para poder hacerlo. En, también tienen que eh, haber trabajado en la plataforma para no atrasarse porque ya la otra semana se termina lo que es el curso. Así que si no han avanzado con la plataforma, tienen que hacerlo en estos días porque si no se van a quedar sin tiempo y si no completan eh, el porcentaje que se les pide en la plataforma, pues lamentablemente no van a poder continuar. Así que si no han trabajado en la plataforma, deben hacerlo en estos días para poder completar las partes que ya se les han pedido. Recuerden que estamos casi terminando la semana 3. Mañana terminamos la semana 3 porque recuerden que vamos a tener eh, la última sesión el día de mañana para reponer la de la semana pasada. So, eh, tenemos que hacer todas esas cosas en estos días para no atrasarnos, ¿verdad? Es solo un recordatorio para los que no se han hecho lo de la reinscripción y para los que no han trabajado en la plataforma. Para los que ya terminaron, pues, qué bueno, ya no tienen que estar trabajando en eso. So, then we are going to talk about the verb conjugation and spelling of these verbs. And in this case, we are going to remember that uh, when we are working with the third person singular, we are going to add the S es a -E -S, to some of the verbs. But in the case that we don't have this like 
uh, regular verbs, we are going to change the form of the verbs. But in this case, it's just present. So we are just going to add S, E, S or A, A E, S to the verbs. Because in that case, we're not like going to change the verbs a lot. And we have like some examples of this rule in this case. And we are going to have like the, um, like the pronouns and we are going to divide it into first a person singular, second person singular and the person of the plural and the third person singular to see the difference in uh, the way we write the verbs. So here we have some examples. And in this case, we are like uh, putting into practice the rule that we have for the third person. And we can uh, say these, um, these examples in a separate way. So we are going to say, to say all the, the um, subject that we have here in the example. And the first one, I speak English at home or I learn English at home you speak English at home or you learn English at home. We speak English at home and we learn English at home. And the last one, they speak English at home and they learn English at home. So in that case, it's a very, very simple uh, sentence. And the change that we make with these verbs is just to add the S at the end. He speaks English at home. She learns English at home and it speaks English at home. The spelling for the verb in the third person differs depending on the ending of that verb. So we are going to see what are the changes that we can make for different verbs because in this case it is not just to add the S at the end because we are going to change some words uh, and in this case some letters of the verbs when we are going to have this rule so we are going to see what is the spelling of the verbs uh, when we are using it in the third person singular
So if we have words, or in this case, if we have a verbs that end in O, C, H, S, H, S, S, X, or Z, we add E, S. Así que si tenemos verbos que terminen en O, en CH, SH, SS, X, or Z, le vamos a agregar E, S al final. En ese caso, siempre le vamos a agregar ES cuando tengamos esos finales. Y vamos a ver algunos ejemplos. So here we have the examples of these kind of verbs in which we are going to end uh, the words with the ES. So we have the first one uh, that is a go that we can transform into goes. Then we have catch that we can transform into catches. Then we have wash that uh, it change to washes. Then kiss, kisses, fix, fixes, and vas, vases. So in that case, we need to add those um, words to the end because in that case, we are going to transform it. And remember, this is just for the third person singular. We are not going to use it with the other pronouns. We are just going to use it with he, she, and it. So in that case, we are not going to use it for the other a subject that we have in English. Then we have the number two. In the number two, it says that for verbs that end in consonant plus Y, we are going to remove the Y and we are going to add AES. So in this case, we change a little bit the way in which we write the verb. So in this case, we are going to change the Y and we are going to transform it into an E. In this case, an, an A, because in that case, we are going to change it. Vamos a cambiarlo un poco en este caso. Eh, no simplemente vamos a agregarle las letras, sino que en este caso sí lo vamos a transformar porque en lugar de cambiarlo, o sea, de, de agregarle, vamos a cambiar la Y y lo vamos a transformar en una I. Y al igual le vamos a agregar la ES al final. So we have Mary and then we have Marys, then study, studies, carry, carries, and worry, worries. And we have another one that it says for the verse that end in vowel plus Y, we are just going to add S. 
En este caso, como tenemos una consonante con una Y, le vamos a cambiar la Y, le, le cambiamos a I, E, S, pero si es una vocal con una Y, solo le vamos a agregar la S. So that's the, the way in which we are going to uh, write this kind of verbs. So now we are going to see the negative form of these sentences in a present simple. So remember that uh, these kind of topics are kind of uh, simple and we know that, uh, or we have a lot of information about them. So now we are just going to make like reviews of this topic because uh, we are going to take like, or to talk about the four uh, statements or the four tenses that we have in present. So in that case, we are just going to remember all the information that we have. And in this case, we are going to continue with the negative. And then we are going to talk about the uh, question. So in this case, it's not like we are like saying, what is that thing? We already have this information. So we are just going to Remember all the things that we know about the uh, present tenses. So we are going to continue with the negative. And then we are going to talk about the questions. And that is the end of this uh, present simple tense. And then we are going to have like uh, some uh, general ideas about the present the present perfect because we have like a couple of minutes for that topic too. So we're going to talk about the negative form of the, um, the simple present uh, statement. So we're going to see what is the information that we have. So in this case, we have like general idea about the negative sentence. In this case, it's just not to add a negative word to make a negative sentence. In this case, we have like some specific things that we need to do with those kind of uh, sentences. We need to make a sentence using don't, doesn't, or do not, does not, with almost all the verbs, but we are not going to use this uh, don't or doesn't with the verb to be. In this case, when we are using to be, we are going just to add the not to that uh, verb and they itself, or in this case, themselves uh, transform into a negative statement. And also we are not going to use the negative form of don't and doesn't with the modal verbs can, might, should, because they also have like, a negative part and we can use the not with those um, modal verbs. So in that case, we are not going to use uh, 
together the don't or doesn't with the verb to be or with the model verbs. So in this case, you can see the difference between the positive or the affirmative sentence with the negative sentence. In this case, we are just adding something to make them negative. We have in the examples in the affirmative one, and we have just speak French, but in the negative one, you have, you don't speak French. And in the second one, in the affirmative sentence, he speaks German. In that case, you have the verb with the S at the end, and then when you have the negative one, you change that and you add the auxiliary, doesn't, and your verb is going to be in base form again. He doesn't speak in German. And then it says that when the subject is he, she, or it, we add doesn't between the subject and the verb to make a negative sentence. And now we are going to have some examples of negative sentence using the don't and doesn't. So let's see the number one. You don't speak Arabic. Then in the second one, Carlos doesn't speak Italian. Number three, we don't have time for a rest. Then we have number four, it doesn't move. It doesn't move. Next one, they don't want to go to the party. They don't want to go to the party. And the next one, she doesn't like fish. She doesn't like fish. 
And the last part of these uh, tense are the questions. So we are going to see what is the structure and some examples, and we are going to finish with that part. with um or in this case it's like uh the most common way in which we can make these questions is with do and does and we have like the difference between the affirmative sentence and with the question because you can see that in that case we make like some movements uh, of the structure and for the affirmative we have you speak english but in the question you have the auxiliary you at the beginning, then you have the subject, then the verb, and then the complement plus the question mark. And we have the other example, he speaks French, and we have the question, does he speak French? Así que para las preguntas siempre vamos a transformar, vamos a cambiar un poco la estructura o el orden de las palabras para poder hacer nuestra pregunta. When the subject is he, she, or it, we add does at the beginning to make the affirmative sentence a question. The letter S at the end of the verb in the affirmative sentence disappears in the question. And why it uh, happens like this? Because in that case, you are using the auxiliary and the auxiliary takes that place. So in that case, when you have the auxiliary that has that kind of, um, changes in this case the does the verb is going to be in the main form so in that case you are not going to add the s when you are um, writing with the third person así que cuando tenemos tercera persona y agregamos un um, auxiliar que cumple esa función de determinar que um, son terceras personas singulares ya nuestro verbo ya no va a necesitar que le agreguemos esas S is al final. So we are going to have some examples of the questions and we are going to end with that topic. So we are going to have some examples.
need a dictionary? Does Marianne need a dictionary? Do we have a meeting now? Does it rain a lot in winter? And do they want to go to the party? So in that case, we finish that topic because it is like, we have a lot of information about them. So it is not necessary to like speak a lot of the um, tense because it's the first thing that we learn when we are like learning um, English. So now we are going to begin with the present perfect, but we are going just to uh, begin the topic because we are almost done because we have like five minutes um, to end the session. But I'm uh, just going to uh, begin that topic and then we are going to continue with that part tomorrow. And we are going to see the other uh, tenses that we have. So in this case, we have the second tense of the present. That is the present perfect. So in this case, we are going to have the form or the structure. And in this case is um, the has or have plus the past participle. And remember that yesterday we were talking about this structure too. And we have some examples. So we have the example number one. You have seen that movie many times. You have seen that movie many times. Then we have another one, and in this case, it's a question. Have you seen? Have you seen that movie many times? And we have another one, and in this case, it's a negative one. You have not seen that movie many times. So in that case, we have like the structure for the three different kind of sentence that we can create. Okay, so we have the structure for the three different kind of sentence that we can create with this uh, uh, tense that in this case is the present perfect. And we have like, this case, in this case, we have just um, singular uh, subject, but it is not uh, like the third person singular. So in this case, you are just going to have the, the structure for the have and, pla and past participle. But tomorrow we are going to see more examples and also we are going to use the third person singular. So we are going to change that structure and we are going to uh, like use all of them, not just the uh, plural or singular with have. We are going to see the uh, has to. And we are going to see what are the uses that we can give for this uh, structure. And then we are going to see the present continuous and present perfect continuous because we are going to end with the present tomorrow. And Remember that um, we are going to have the last session tomorrow because we are going to uh, take the class of the last week uh, tomorrow. So we are going to see each other tomorrow. And we are almost done with uh, this um, uh, session. Así que recuerden que mañana tenemos la última sesión porque estamos reponiendo la de la semana pasada. Así que nos vamos a ver el día de mañana. Y eh, 
vamos a terminar este tema del presente. Y también, si tienen algún problema con la plataforma, pueden pedir ayuda para ir avanzando con sus ejercicios. No sé si tienen alguna pregunta o alguna duda en este momento. You can ask something or, or say something. Or everything is okay? It's okay. Okay. So, recuerden que ya están lo de las reinscripciones, así que si no lo han hecho, lo pueden hacer y también tienen que trabajar en la plataforma porque estamos a punto, a punto, a punto de terminar. Así que espero que se pongan al día con todo eso. So, we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow. So, we are going to see each other tomorrow. So, have a really good night. Okay. Thank you. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night.